Hello and welcome to this whole season short summary. We are going to be going over the 1959 East Pacific Tropical Storm Season or the 1959 Pacific Hurricane Season. The Pacific is very large, of course. Granted, so is any ocean. So the on the eastern side of the Pacific, they are called hurricanes because that's closer to the U.S. The Saffir Simpson scale is used. And in the West Pacific, more towards China, Japan, of course, is where the typhoon name is used for tropical storms. But over here is hurricanes. In 1959, we had a total of 15 storms. All of the tracks are right here. We had a total of five hurricanes from the season. Three of them would become major, those being Dot, Patsy, and Number 15, which I will call the unpopular name of Burger King Foot Lettuce. Leave me alone. It's a funny joke, I promise. <laughs> the total casualties from all of these storms combined is approximately 1,802. 1,800 would come from just one storm. And the total number, the total number in terms of damage is 280 million US dollars approximately. There's no true number, like there's no non-estimated number because uh, not much surveying was done with some other storms. For example, this depression that went along the coast of Mexico or this hurricane that hit Baja, California uh, didn't get uh, proper uh, damage number estimates from it, which is uh, unfortunate. But we are going to start off with the dot. Dot is this closest track to Hawaii here and was first identified on August 1st, southeast of Hawaii. By six hours later, after it, after it had been named, Dot had intensified in uh, becoming a hurricane at this point. So we are now in this, th that is the, uh, the, the palest yellow you could possibly imagine dots um, here. The blues are depressions and the light blue is a, a tropical storm status. By August 3rd, it had reached its absolute maximum, its absolute maximum, sorry, with winds just shy relatively of Cat 5 strength at 150 miles per hour and a recorded minimum pressure of 952 millibars. Three days later, Dot would landfall on Kauai as a minimal hurricane, minimal hurricane being winds of 74 miles per hour. Gusts on Kauai reached all the way to 103 miles per hour. As you can imagine, these winds caused extensive power outages, roof, roof damage, and plenty of downed trees. Damage from surrounding four islands totaled 150,000 US dollars. Meanwhile, the total damage from dots was 6 million US dollars. Number 10 here is a very interesting storm because it was a hurricane for quite some time, as we can see here. We at least know that on September 4th, it was first tracked along the Mexican coast as a hurricane, uh, definitely originating from, well, somewhere, of course. A tropical disturbance is not just a hurricane to start off with. However, where that is, is unknown. By September 6th, traveling a fair distance, number 10 would almost landfall on Mexico, as you can see there. However, approximately three days later, September 9th now, it would landfall on a Baja California Sur. That's the official name for Baja California. Notice how this thing kept its hurricane status all the way until 24 hours later where it finally started to weaken September 10th and would dissipate soon after on September 11th. 
Granted, Baja California is very thin, so I am not fully surprised that number 10 was able to keep its hurricane strength for as long as it did. But it is still surprising, still, that it was able to keep it for just that long. Again, despite Baja California being very slim. Patsy, moving on to Patsy, is a very interesting storm. This was a unexpected disturbance on September 6th, where multiple aircraft had reported a possible disturbance near the International Dateline. I'm shortening it to IDL for text reasons. The first planned recon into Patsy managed to reveal estimated surface winds of up to 172 miles per hour which is well above the 158 miles per hour required for Cat 5 strength. So definitely earning the Cat 5 um, spots. It would slowly weaken to Category 3 after crossing the International Dateline. It would then cross it again. And by this point, the second time crossing, it would be a just a regular Cat 1 hurricane. Regular a Cat 1 hurricane. Interestingly enough, when a storm crosses the international dayline, it is called a typhoon. At least up until this point in 59, they were. I do not believe that this has changed. Um, it very possibly could have. But at the time, because Patsy crossed the international dayline, it was called both Typhoon Patsy and Hurricane Patsy, interestingly enough. After crossing the international date line a total of three times, she would quickly dissipate on September 10th. A very interesting northern track with this system. The last thing about Patsy, though, is that this is the very first known about Category 5 in the Eastern Pacific. Um, records on the East Pacific do not go as far back as the Atlantic, so it is unknown if there is any other Cat 5s before Patsy. There most likely was, of course, however, they are just unknown. Our last notable here is number 15. This one, despite the fact that I'm going to call it Burger King Foot Lettuce because I think that name is funny, haha, <laughs> get it number 15 meme, it is much more well known as the 1959 Mexico hurricane. It was first detected on October 22nd as simply a low in the Gulf of Tehuantepec. Now where that is, it is either in this area here, in which case it did an interesting curve, or is further south. Do I forget? Yes. I do not know where the Gulf of Tehuantepec is. What we do know is that by October 23rd, number 15 would achieve hurricane status. It is estimated that three days later, it became a major hurricane, meaning Cat 3 and above. Number 15 would landfall on the town of Manzanillo in the district of Colima, Mexico, with winds of 140 miles per hour and a recorded minimum pressure of 958 millibars. This storm, similar to how Patricia weakened, would rapidly weaken within just 12 hours and fully dissipated on October 28th. Number 15 would blow down every single coconut plantation in the area, which is an absolutely devastating loss no, no, no matter no matter what crop it is, if a storm managed, if a if a hurricane managed to hit California and blew down all of the let's just say apple orchards there, that would be an absolutely devastating loss. Orange trees in Florida, it's it's the same deal, but for every single one in the area to be blown down was an absolute economic nightmare, and definitely destroyed the livelihoods of many people, unfortunately. 
It is also documented that number 15 would submerge up to 150 vessels. Number 15 is also the one that I said that caused those 1,800 deaths and caused around 300 million U.S. dollars in damage. I will have to move on from this somber note and talk about the season significance. 1959 is the season, again with Patsy, the first known East Pacific Category 5 storm. Like I said earlier, there could have absolutely been other ones before this. However, we do not know about them. So, Patsy is the first ever Eastern Pacific Category 5. Number 15 is the deadliest East Pacific tropical system. Again, with those 1,800 deaths. As you can imagine, with a total of 15 storms, this is a little bit on the higher end of the bell curve for Eastern Pacific activeness. For the most part, um, the five hurricanes necessarily isn't. And I don't think that many people would estimate this because we usually in the United States focus on the Atlantic. But the Eastern Pacific is actually the second most uh, active tropical storm producer in the world, only um, sh only being shadowed by the other side of the Pacific, the West Pacific. No, not the South or the North, the West. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all that I have for the 1959 Eastern Pacific season. I hope you all learned something. That's, of course, the point of these videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.